All right, awesome. All right, welcome everybody to the monthly Southside Wellness Coalition. Um, today's meeting is October the 19th, a uh, hybrid meeting here on Zoom as well as in person. And we have cake. For those of y'all that mentioned the cake last month, <laughs> cake is here. If you want to swing by and grab a slice, if you're not already in the room, our coalition cake here. All right, so I'm going to start with last week's, excuse me, last month's minutes. Time it just flies, doesn't it? It seems like last week. We have we've had so much exciting stuff going on. All right, so minutes from last month. There we go. Awesome. All right. So as I mentioned earlier, um, the recorded session is posted on our blog for September of 2023. It was also featured <clears throat> in our newsletter that just went out on Monday. Um, I had a great presentation by Peter. Um, and so in the minutes, uh, we have a um, summary of Peter's presentation, along with his contact information. We had an update on Revive and the recovery run, plans for the LGBTQ Summit in Danville, along with the campaign for that, and then upcoming events. And of course, today we have many more upcoming events to share as well. Uh, membership updates, lots of folks sharing good information, following up about vaccines and such, and member updates from last month, and of course, um, future training announcements. So lots of good stuff happening. All right, do we have any questions? If you please drop them in the chat box or turn on your microphone. I'll make sure that um, we get your questions answered. Any questions about last month's minutes? All right, Stephen makes a motion to accept the minutes. All right, if someone can give me a second. Go, Liam says he seconds. Thank you so much. All right, awesome. All right, so uh, for those of you in the room, you do have a hard copy of the agenda. For those of you online, it was posted in the newsletter. In addition, I'm going to share it here on the screen before we um, tackle through all the great information this morning. Let me see there. Bring that up for everybody. All right, so the agenda for today. All right. So, so you should see on the screen. Hybrid meeting beginning at 10 a.m., approval of minutes, and then we're going to share great news about the LGBTQ Summit this past weekend, as well as um, our progress on the Virginia Foundation for Healthy Youth Tobacco Prevention Grant. Uh, lots of information to share about both of those projects and events over the last month. Um, and then you can see, I am going to go through all the events that we are supporting coming up in October, November, um, lots of good stuff happening. We want folks to come out and join us. Um, we're getting a lot of additional requests for in-person events and participation moving forward. Um, and then we have an update from the leadership team that we're excited about, we want to announce today. Um, and then also talk about um, the elections for 2024. I cannot believe, guys, we're almost into 2024. Someone emailed me the day about something in January. I was like, January? I was like, oh, my gosh, it's already almost the end of October. Like, where have I been, right? <laughs> um, so lots of training announcements. And then, of course, any other announcements from leadership team, announcements from our members here joining us today. I'd love to hear what's going on in the community. All right, so let me let me stop share there so I'm able to share some good stuff on the screen. All right, so that's our agenda. Does anybody have anything that they wanted to ask before we get started on the agenda? All right, so then let's start with introductions and we'll start in the room. 
And then we'll call everybody out here on my big, wonderful owl screen here. My owl's been really cooperative this morning, too. Keeping my fingers crossed. She hasn't been cranky today. <laughs> She's, usually she shuts down on me two or three times by 930. So I'm feeling lucky today. I'm feeling lucky. Must be the Halloween vibe or something. All right. So in the room. Uh, hi, my name is Stephen Wilson. I'm a, a resident of Mecklenburg County, current member of the leadership team for the coalition, and I've been with the coalition for about five years. I'm also a member of our local recovery community, and uh, I'm glad to be here. All right, awesome. Welcome, Catherine. Catherine Maloney with Tri County Community Action Agency. I've been a member of the co coalition for about probably four years now, leadership team for on and off. Um, and I represent Charwell, Beckenberg County, and Halifax County. Awesome. Thank you. All right. And then on the screen, we'll start with Elena. Good morning. I'm Elena Martin. I'm the housing case manager here at Tri County. Awesome. Good morning. All right. And Carla? Good morning. I'm Carla Thomas with Health Quality Innovators. Um, I threw some things in the chat about us, as well as a few resources. Um, unfortunately, I can only stay till 1030, but I'm happy to be here and support anything that Coalition's working on. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you, Carla. Adla? Good morning. Um, my name is Adla Angelina. I'm a retired pathologist, and I am a resident of Halifax County. Awesome. Good morning, Barbara. Um, good morning. I'm Barbara Johnson. I'm a community health worker with the Virginia Department of Health serving the Southside Health District. Good morning, Barbara. Thank you. Brenna? Good morning. Brenna Link, Population Health Manager for the Department of Health for Pittsburgh and Danville and Southside. Good morning. Um, and Liam? Uh, hey, good morning, everybody. Liam Hudson. Um, I represent Halifax County. I am currently the chair of the Wellness Coalition uh, and the founder of the Lean In Project. And I recognize, uh, I recognize, and I represent Halifax. Good morning. Um, Angela? Hi, good morning. I'm Angela Jameson. I'm the Community Engagement and Partnerships Coordinator with Central VA Healthcare System. Thank you. All right, good morning. And George and Desiree. Good morning. Good morning, George. Hope you're doing well. We're doing we're doing well. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Glad you could join us. Thank you. Thank you. Your camera is a little lopsided a little bit. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's because I have this thing set up with the uh, the laptop on a connect to a larger screen, so I can I can probably get it better. Oh, there we go. That's it. Can Hello. you see? We can see. I don't want to see. All right, awesome, awesome. So glad y'all can join us. Awesome. Good to see familiar faces. Awesome. Well, welcome, welcome. All right. Well, welcome everyone. We'll go ahead and get started. Thank you so much for introducing yourselves. All right, so all right, so all right, so back to our agenda. So this past Sunday, let me share my screen. Saturday, Saturday I'm sorry, thank you. <laughs> this past Saturday. All right. In fact, if you want to speak to this, I'll share the poster and you want to tell us what happened this past Saturday. So they get tired of hearing my voice. They get tired of hearing my voice. You and Liam, that's right. You and Liam can take this over, right? Okay. All right, let me share the poster on the screen. All right, and then, yeah, this past Saturday, Catherine, Liam, take it away. Okay, I can start, and Liam can chime in, and so can Keenan. Um, this Saturday, there were a lot of different organizations that pulled together um, and had a summit for the LGBTQ plus folks and allies. Um, there were a lot of really great guest speakers that took us through a lot of different 
sessions um, and explain terms like that we may not have understood. It was a active learning. Um, there were booths set up where you could go talk to the different parties and determine how that all fit in with the um, summit. And uh, there were people from all walks of life, um, all different perspectives who taught us some really, really great stuff. Um, so South High Behavioral Health was there. We worked there at the coalition giving away lock boxes. Keenan did um, training on uh, uh, Revive. So people got to go through Revive training if they wanted to. Um, and I can't say enough. It, it really, for me personally, I've always been an advocate and an ally. But it put into perspective things maybe I never understood and just kind of blew past it. Right. And um, and it just it just gave me a really good perspective. And I think everybody walked out of there thinking, how can I bring this into my business life? How can I bring this into my personal life? And how can I share the open-mindedness of all the people that were at the summit? So yes. that was my perspective. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and Liam? Yeah, and I, you know, I echo all of that. I just um, want to give a huge shout out to Southside Behavioral Health and Danville, Pennsylvania Community Services Board. Um, you know, I, it, it, it just really, um, it was a great partnership and I think a great, that led to a great event. Um, I also just appreciated that, we had so many experts come in from uh, Richmond to speak to us. Our keynote um, came down from Richmond. We also had the president of Equality Virginia there. So I thought that was pretty big um, for our first, you know, summit of the kind to have have some pretty well-known folks there. Um, and, you know, just, just want to add that I'm excited about the We Stand Together. Uh, I'm going to call it a movement at this point um, because... What we are doing here is very likely going to be used as like an example for other area CSBs and people who are recipients of the Behavioral Health Equity Grant. Um, and so it's pretty cool because we're quite literally making history. And um, yeah, just really excited about that. And I hope that the community felt, you know, felt that it was worthwhile and can take some of what they learned back. Um, I also think that for me, it illuminated the need for us to continue doing this work and to think about like kind of what Catherine said of like, not only do, should we take it back to our organizations, but how do we do that in a meaningful way? Um, and so my head is already, my head is already going on things to include next year. Hint, hint, Keenan. So, um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think it was a really great event. Um, you know, we were a little bit nervous because it rained, but the rain didn't seem to deter too many folks. So that was great. Um, and all in all, I think it was a job well done by everyone. Yeah, the only thing I want to add to that is we've gotten great positive newspaper coverage. Um, an article came out yesterday. I'll include that in our minutes um, that uh, were very well received. And um, I thought it was fantastic. So yeah, thank you all. Thank you all for sharing. There were a lot of people. The other thing was there were a lot of people who volunteered from different organizations to come support the organizations that supported the summit also. Absolutely. So there's a lot yes. of people that Yeah, Elena was there. Shout out to you, Elena. Our harm reduction holder. Lacey is also here and she says hi. Oh Lacey. Lacey was also there. Lacey was our photographer. Keenan, I can't hear you. Can't? Okay. Can you hear me now? Okay. Uh, so just to, one more thing I want to add. Sure. I was really, I was really thankful that no question was a stupid question. <laughs> <laughs> um and I was very thankful that there were people in the community who spoke up yes. and gave their perspective. That was very helpful because you can assume people feel a certain way or 
are treated a certain way, but when you hear about it from the youth, especially, yes, um, it, it was very powerful. It was also one of really the most like loving and warm environments that I've ever been to for an event. It was really a great time. It was very nice. Yeah, everybody working together, everybody supporting each other. A few of us chasing each other around because we were in charge of the timing. <laughs> yeah, yeah the no judgment was great. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Any other comments? Hey. <laughs> Any other comments about that? Yeah, awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, um, the next item on the agenda is also to share great information about our progress with the Virginia Foundation for Healthy Youth, to youth Tobacco um, Prevention Grant. Let me share on the screen again. Um, so as you all know, we are in our third year of... Um, um, where to go? Um, we're in our oh no, it's over here. Um, we're in our third year of the Virginia Foundation for Healthy Youth. Here it is. No, that's not it. Here it is. Um, all right, everybody should see on the screen our press release. Um, that's just to let you know what went out earlier this month prior to our monthly meeting. We formally announced that. Um, in our third year, the Virginia Foundation for Healthy Youth grant that we then decided, given that COVID numbers went down, we formed relationships with all three of our local school systems, as well as the Southern Virginia Higher Education Center. And so that project has launched. We have a shared drive with the three schools or the four schools, three county schools, and then the Southern Virginia Higher Education Center. So we have a shared drive with all four school partners. Um, Sarah, our marketing coordinator here, who also works with the coalition, has been doing site visits with the schools. Um, Stephanie Robinson, who is the lead CTE person at the Southern Virginia Higher Education Center, she also is conducting site visits with the school systems. Again, with the idea, as I know I've shared in previous meetings, but I want to give you guys an update, is that we are utilizing all the evidence-based best practices from the CDC, from the Truth Initiative, through counter tools, which, uh, which um, formulates and, and guides our retailer education that I do with the local retailers in our area. And we're using all these evidence-based practices and allow these, the students inside the marketing classrooms of all four of these school buildings, school systems, to create social media graphics around nicotine prevention, um, trying to get uh, young folks to understand um, the harmful effects of nicotine. Um, and so starting this coming Monday, the 23rd, on both the coalition and um, agency social media will begin to be this campaign that was created by these young folks. Um, and of course, it's been exciting because they're learning how to use some real school uh, life-based skills like manipulating Canva, understanding how, how marketing works in terms of imagery and language. Um, and then of course they're applying the best practices um, from the CDC as well as truth initiatives. And so it's really morphed into this really wonderful project. Um, we are actively talking to the teachers um, on a monthly basis where they have a monthly Zoom meeting they're talking to each other, we're conducting site visits. And so I just want you guys to be updated about the progress in that. We're certainly always looking for anyone on the coalition who would like to join that team, be part of that consult. If tobacco prevention, nicotine prevention is part of what you feel strongly about, let me know. I'd be more than happy to hook you up with Sarah and Stephanie Robinson and get you involved in the conversation about what the young folks are doing, certainly looking at all the different graphics that they drop in the share drive um, every couple of weeks. We certainly need folks that are willing to go in and say, hey, this graphic looks really good. We want to put this on social media or this graphic might need a little work and we want to change it up. Um, and also, um, as you guys know, with the PSAs that we've created in recent years, that these young folks are, have also been told they're welcome to create short videos or PSAs as well. 
Um, and so they've been doing a deep dive into that. So lots of great things happening with that project. And again, when you're on our social media next week and you begin to see some new ads for, um, for not ads, but posts about the um, harmful effects of vaping, harmful effects of nicotine, that's no longer coming from us or any paid marketing team. That's coming from the young folks in these three high schools across our catchment area. So really super excited about the neat creative stuff that they're coming up with. Keenan, I'd like to participate in reviewing the marketing material and all that. Awesome. Whatever they're producing. Oh, yeah. awesome. Okay. Yeah, I, I would like to do that. All Thank right. You. So Catherine has volunteered for that. Anyone else? Because we can add you to the share drive. We can add you to the team. And really, it's just a way of supporting these young folks, helping them understand the, how important their work is. Um, Liam, awesome. And um, as part of the grant, um, after the Christmas holiday, starting in January, I'll be reaching out to the team and we're going to start planning an in-person event where we can invite the young folks um, or an online event. It can be either one, according to the Virginia Foundation for Healthy Youth. We can invite them and, and celebrate them and um, thank them for their contributions and really just celebrate the progress of the last year of this grant. Um, and then, of course, all of the stuff that they create becomes part of, of stuff that we can use in years to come as well. But they're super excited. Nice kids. We've, we've, we've been with them in person. We've been with them on Zoom. It's really kind of cool. Um, and the other day, in fact, one of the classrooms called us and said they needed to talk to us right away. Sarah and I jumped on a Zoom. We made it happen in less than 24 hours. The teacher put us up on the on the wall and they could ask Sarah some questions about Canva and what they were doing. And, and it was really exciting that they were excited that they requested the meeting and they got it so quickly. <laughs> and I was like, we're here for you, we're here for you. And so they're creating great stuff. All right, uh, any other questions, comments about that initiative? All right, and then going back, um, some other things that are happening. All right, so Boynton Day. So we are still looking for coalition members. We secured a table at Boynton Day. Um, do I have the flyer for that? Let me see if I, I know you guys saw the flyer. I don't think I brought it up today. No, I didn't. I, I know it's in the newsletter, a flyer about next Saturday's Boynton Day. We're setting up a table. We're gonna be passing out lock and talk boxes. Stephen says he's coming. All right, you don't have to let me know today. If you wanna drop it in the chat, you're welcome to. If not, just let me know before next Saturday. What time do we have? Um, it's, uh, it's a 10 to four event. So if you want to be there when we set up at nine, if you want to be there when we tear down at four, if you want to be there in between, that'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. All right. So Boyd Day tabling on the 28th. Um, oh, I jumped ahead a little bit. So the Sokova Summit is this coming Monday. Liam and Stephen and I will be attending the Sokova Summit um, on behalf of the coalition. Um, we have that. All right. And then that goes to, of course, November. Um, and also in October, we've got some events. I'm going to share the flyers with you that we hope that many of you will join us at. Um, so our veteran outreach. So as you all know, we were able to contract with a local veteran consultant, get help in connecting to places where um, some veteran-owned businesses or veteran-sponsored events were happening. So let me share with you. Oops, let me stop sharing that. I didn't realize I was sharing that. My apologies. Let me look back. So I want to share with you. So this coming um, Wednesday night, hold on, let's see. Where is it? There it is. This coming Wednesday night, if you would be wonderful to have coalition members come and participate in, in a combination revive and lock and talk. As you all know, revive takes about an hour to an hour and a half. Lock and talk takes 15 minutes. So We've got this set up. It's going to be at the Factory Street Brewery in South Boston that was set up by our veteran consultant um, to go in and have a revive presentation and lock and talk display at the brewery from four to six. Again, inviting folks um, to participate and have conversations. Um, Angela, I know as well as her team, 
um, have shipped me boxes of items specifically from the VA, sharing information about the 988 number, how to contact the VA. So I've got um, all kinds of, I've got koozies. Oh, I'm not even doing it justice. I have uh, pill containers. I have all kinds of great stuff, pens and such. Anyway, some various items that we'll also have there um, for veterans um, at the event. Um, lots of good stuff to hand to them. So if you'd like to come and talk about the value of the coalition um, and connect them um, not only to the VA services, but also information about Southside Behavioral Health and our coalition, please join us next Wednesday night. Um, it was also in the newsletter. The 26th, which I'm, is that right? That is That's next Wednesday night. Thursday. That's a Thursday. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh my gosh, delete that in the recording. My bad. My days are rolling. I'm sorry. So Monday is the 23rd. That's the code. I'm, sorry. I'm so sorry, y'all. It's Thursday. It's Thursday night. Thursday night. Thursday night. My apologies. My apologies. My apologies. I mean, and I know this is geared towards people that are veterans or have veteran ties, but I, I would assume we wouldn't turn anybody away. No, we're not turning well. anybody away. Right. No, we're not turning anybody away. But in working with Laura, um, it was my understanding that where folks that are affiliated with Factory Brewery are veterans. Excellent. And so they were going to share the flyer out to folks that they're connected to. But no, it's an open community event. And of course, we're not going to be asking folks, hey, are you a veteran before you come in? We're just whoever happens to be there that night. Okay. She's forecasting 25 people. I'll come ready for more than that. And we'll set up the lock and talk. We'll set up the revive. And then we'll just roll people in and get them the Narcan and the training. I think it'll be really great. And this will be, and we also, you know. Did you send that flyer out? I did. Okay. Uh, it's in the newsletter. And I can I can also send it out separately if you want to make a note. Oh, you can get it. Okay. Um, and also, I know it's in a, a, a brewery, but we do have, we got permission that we could do that. So. <laughs> All right. Um, but I'll say no one has. You know, challenged me on it, so I think it's good. All right, and then also, all right. So I got my dates confused, but anyway. So, um, also, the next event that we have is November eighth. Let me share that one as well. All right. So the next event that we have, am I right about that? Yeah, November eighth. Why well, keep putting that screen down? Because I keep on the show the same. All right. So then November eighth. Again, um, veteran outreach that we've got with the consultant. Um, November 8th at the Springfield Distillery, which is in Halifax, there's going to be a lock and talk event for an hour. Again, my understanding, this is a veteran owned and supported um, business. And again, they are reaching out to local veterans to come to the location from four to five. It'll, it'll be a wide setup of lock and talk including, as I mentioned, all the wonderful items that Angela and her team have shipped me. Um, and of course, anyone's welcome to attend. Again, this is a great opportunity for over an hour to have conversations with our local folks about um, the coalition, about services, and again, to provide them with some uh, lethal means safety devices, as well as some branded items from 988 and the Veterans Administration. So looking forward to that as well on November 8th. And then I know you're going to really be feeling great that week. There's another event connected to veterans that we are participating in. And if you can't, like, I'm going to change screens now. So hang with me there. There we go. It should have changed. So we have been invited as a coalition to the SBCC Alberta campus on November 9th. It's the Veterans Appreciation Luncheon. Uh, we are going to be setting up a table. We're setting up a table. Uh, we've not been invited to speak or demonstrate. This is just the SVCC campus setting up and allowing folks that have local resources to come and share information with their veterans that they're inviting to the campus for a luncheon and a walk around on November the 9th. So Angela and her team are going to be there with the table. We're going to be there with the table. Anyone, again, that wants to come and help at the tabling event, 
again, and this is this. My understanding is they've sent out invitations to their local SVCC veterans to come to the campus on November the 9th. So super exciting, super exciting that we're increasing our outreach to our local veterans um, and certainly hope and increase the capacity of our group. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay. All right, let's see, I got something in chat. Let's see there, stop that for a second. All right. Angela said, excited for next Thursday evening. Awesome. So she's going to join us. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, anything that you, anything, to, Angela, you wanted to add to any one of those three events? Um, nothing real specifically, just excited that we're um, able to kind of branch out and get out there and try to um, reach out to all those veterans and hopefully, um, you know, bring more folks to the table and maybe join the coalition, have some veteran representation. Um, and this is kind of slightly off topic, but just to let you know, Tamika's position finally did get posted and that closed out on Monday. Um, so um, VA is looking at hiring another person. That'll be a little bit easier for us to kind of get to you since I'm all the way in Stafford County. <laughs> um, you'll probably get a little bit more participation with the replacement who'll be located in Richmond. All right. Awesome. Yeah. Be safe driving. I used to live up in that area. That's going to be a little bit of a trek for you, but at least the traffic will be less as you get closer to us. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, it's good. I've got a good audio book to listen to. <laughs> But safe travel, safe travel. All right, um, so next on our agenda is the, um, all right, so trauma-informed care network update. Uh, Mary wasn't able to make it this morning, uh, but we are sponsoring two in-person ACEs um, in November. Um, it's gonna be November 16th and the 30th. And I just got the flyer made, it, it's, in the, it's in the process of being made. Um, and I'll share that as soon as it's launched. But basically, it's going to be at the um, beginning youth um, um, agency in South in Halifax. They're sponsoring an ACES training on the 16th, and they're sponsoring a showing of the movie on the 30th. Again, that will be in Halifax by the beginning youth tomorrow agency. And again, when I have that flyer, I will send it out and we'll post on our social media as well. And that's open to the public in addition to the folks that run that agency. Heenan. Yes. I was wondering, uh, what is an ACE? To me, an ACE is Adverse Childhood Event. Yes, uh, yes. It's going to be an, an ACEs training for an hour and a half. Um, that's one of the one of the trainings that we sponsor. It's the learning about the adverse childhood experience, original study, going into the brain science, talking about resiliency factors, and then basically just welcoming folks to talk about what they currently do to build resiliency. And then on the second night, we purchased um, the rights back in early May as part of a grant, we purchased the rights to use the film called Resilience, um, which is about an hour long. And we have five year rights to show that movie. In fact, um, George has seen that movie. A lot of the folks on this call have seen that movie um, that does a deep dive. Um, it's a film about Dr. Anda and the A study team and the travels that they've made. And they share a lot of different perspectives about, again, the importance of everybody understanding the ACE study. Mm. Great. Yeah, I hope you'll join us. And I'm, I'm going to send the flyers out. I just had the flyer approved and we'll send that out. And that will be November 16th and 30th. At the so same the movie's day. being played both times? No, no, no just we're doing the ACE thing. training on the 16th and then we're doing the movie on the 30th. So it's not training, it's ACEs on the 16th and the movie on the 30th. Yes, yes. Yeah. So that's basically two. Well, we're basically featuring it as two ACEs training events, but one's going to be the movie, I mean, one's going to be the training at that location, and then the following, the second, the 16th, and then what, I don't know if that's a Wednesday or Thursday, I'm, I'm already, I'm, I'm jinxing myself. The 16th myself. This is Thursday. Okay, so on the 16th, <laughs> and then two weeks later, after Thanksgiving, because we had to jump Thanksgiving, um, we're going to do the movie, so we hope that folks come on the 16th, we'll come back on the 30th, our folks that may already have ACEs training, like Catherine's bringing up, will join us on the 30th. 
And that again, again, we need coalition members there to talk about, and as well as trauma-informed care members also, as I've shared with Mary, we need folks there just to rally around, have conversations with other folks, encourage their participation in our um, organization. So we're gonna be getting lots of folks, lots of folks hopefully to attend all that. So uh, I just wanted to say, I don't know that I'm, uh, make sure I get the flyer. Okay. Awesome. It's going to be in this month's minutes too. Okay, great. Thank you. Awesome. I'm going to make a note here. Okay, awesome. All right. And then the next item on our agenda, and you all want to mess this up. Um, all right, leadership team updates. Um, so. So Jamie King, a member of our leadership team, has proposed, um, he works for Mecklenburg County Sheriff's Office. Um, he and the other uh, folks at the Mecklenburg County Sheriff's Office uh, approached me. We had a little bit of a meeting with, also with the Virginia Poison Control Center with Shelly Clary. They are proposing that they are willing to help build and staff a presentation called Hidden in Plain Sight. And just to do a quick history lesson, Catherine and I were sharing. So back in 2019, our coalition um, did sponsor a hidden in plain sight. That's an opportunity where law enforcement come to your area and they make a presentation about how young folks, unfortunately, buy or create items to hide their substance misuse. And we brought Culpeper Police Department from Northern Virginia back up there where um, where Angela is now, sort of neighbor to her. So those folks came down in um, November of 2019, put on two hit, hidden in plain sight events, one at Halifax High School, one at South Hill Elementary. It was very well received. Parents came out um, and other folks came out to see and listen to their presentation about, again, the ways in which, unfortunately, young folks are hiding their substance misuse and how we could handle that um, in our schools and our communities. What Jamie and his team are proposing is that they're going to go ahead and begin learning that information, putting together information. We as a coalition will help fund some of their items. So uh, I wish Jamie was here to talk, but he had a conflict today, but he is hoping to, uh, I'm using my notes, he said, um, putting together a bedroom setup, putting together a classroom setup, and putting together a bus setup, a school bus setup, and again, allowing parents, teachers, guidance counselors, anyone, even our grandparents who are raising young folks to walk through these displays and looking for, again, what's hidden in plain sight. And then his team coming in and sharing information um, about what is hidden and where these product products are coming from. And just really increasing parental knowledge, school knowledge, all these young folks, all these folks come in contact with kids, increasing their knowledge. We do have our next meeting to talk about next steps on November the 7th. So if anybody is interested in joining that, please let me know. Um, we see this as being one of the things we could launch in the spring that the coalition could get behind, which also would include, as we mentioned, with the revive training, including some other training options with this. This is going to be talking about substance misuse, et cetera. All right. Any questions, comments about that suggested of initiative that's coming to the leadership team? Is that something that Jamie intends to like come into Brunswick County maybe with, do it there and be able to travel, even though it's sponsored sort of by Mecklenburg County and us? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm trying to grasp the ability to roam to our catchment area. Well, it talks with uh, between Shelly at the Poison Control Center because she covers Halifax, Brunswick, and Poria in the District 19. We talked about if we're putting together and combining funding for different parts of it, there would then be the understanding that yes, that team would travel and that if that we also would invite other local law enforcement to join it, though that wouldn't be required, gotcha. but then we would then be able to go into the counties that we cover, the counties that she covers. Okay. Um, and then also um, even, and also then into counties that may not have the program, but they're adjacent to us. 
So like yes, County and, and or something. we were we talked about if we're going to be a combined funding, there has to be the understanding that it's not just a Mecklenburg initiative. And he agreed to that. Okay. Um, now, of course, I think the initial launch will be in Mecklenburg, right. and then we'll go out from there with the idea that we would take it to Halifax and and to Brunswick, and then also invite law enforcement from those teams to also join. Right. Which I think would be fantastic. I agree. Okay. All right. Awesome. All right. Any other comments on that initiative? All right. Um, and then what I'll do, let me go back to my screen so we can open the floor to our membership today and hear about all the wonderful stuff that you guys have been doing and are doing. Which SVCC is the rapid revive in, in November? Oh, yeah, I hadn't even put that on here, did I? I forgot I did. I <laughs> I that's right. That's we right. Got a virtual that's right. We got a rapid revive. Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 All right. So let's get to our events. So yes. So all kinds of cool stuff happening. So under training announcements, before we get oh, well, let me mention also the before we get back to leadership team. Next month we are going to be talking about elections for the leadership team. We do have our bylaws to be stepping up and stepping down. That'll be next month. But yes, all the cool trainings. So we've got um, a virtual ACES this afternoon, which I'm a core trainer on, starts at one o'clock if you register for that. If you don't have time for that today and still want to take a virtual training for the end of this year, there's also one on November 15th and December 6th. Don't ask what day of week they are. I'm sorry, I should put that on here. <laughs> I just know their dates. All right, then we have... Um, um, which is a professional development day, so I didn't make a flyer for this, but uh, we are traveling to Halifax High School this coming Wednesday, the 25th, and we are doing an in-person uh, revive training for Halifax High School's professional development day. So super excited about our invitation into the schools. And you guys know, of course, I'm gonna be giving them information about the coalition and their revive packets. Then uh, we are also sponsoring a blended youth mental health first aid. That is the mental health first aid class that lasts eight hours, two hours you do online. Uh, and then you come to SVHEC on November 3rd for the other six hours. We still have open seats in that. If you'd like a seat in that, please email me as soon as possible. Um, you do have to complete two hours of pre-coursework online and then show up at SVHEC on November the 3rd, which is in South Boston. Then in-person ACEs, as we just talked about, and with the with the Trauma Informed Care Network in South Boston, November 16th and 30th. And then as always, we continue offering virtual revive for some. That is the easier option than attending it in-person. There's one October 30th, November 20th, and December 12th that close out virtual revive options for this calendar year. And then rapid revive, as Stephen and Catherine brought up. We are gonna be conducting Rapid Revive just as we did at the campus of SVHEC back in August on November 15th. Uh-oh. One of them is Keysville and one of them is Alberta. Okay. Hold up. November 15th is Keysville. November 28th is Alberta. Is that gonna be indoor? That will be indoors, yes. That will be indoor. Well, my understanding is it's gonna be in the lobby. And I've been in the lobby of both those locations. So it's gonna be a it's a big lobby. a lobby event. And they're nice lobbies. Mm -hmm. They're they're big enough for folks to be coming in and getting rapid revive. Yep. And again, we tried to jump around the Thanksgiving holiday a little bit to get those on the calendar and in before the end of the year. So lots of cool stuff. So all kinds of events. Welcome your attendance. We forgot about the uh all right. all right. So now let's open the floor to the the um membership, membership updates. Okay. Hey, um, I'd just like to briefly share something that happened recently. I emailed Keenan about this when it happened, but um, I did, I've, I've had the revive class and I didn't always carry my Narcan with me. It was in my desk this day and I was driving home and across the street from my house, I saw my mom um, standing over a stranger and this, this person had OD'd, and the person they were with has, had pulled over. There's a business across the street from my house. And she, my mom was yelling, where's your Narcan? And I had to tell her, it's my desk at work. Um, 
EMS showed up about 30 seconds after I did. Um, we did CPR. They took her to the hospital, and the, the person is fine. But um, it was a very important lesson on being prepared. So I know I'm preaching to the choir here, but if you have it, carry it with you. It's in my purse. It's never further than 20 feet away from me. Never will be again. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Anyone else for updates, updates? Anything you'd like to share? Yeah, thank you, Carl. Carl, this is a powerful story, Elena. Thanks for sharing. And yeah, we're doing good work on the ground, right, in the communities. I have to always be available with the skills we have. All right, anyone else for updates? Leadership team, did I miss anything? Anything that we are? I, I didn't know. I always like to ask the membership if there's any topics for future meetings that um, they'd like to hear about or any guest speakers that you may um, know that would like to share a story that fits in with our goals and mission. And, and so if you do, please speak up or if you don't want to speak up in front of people, um, you can always email Keenan and with your ideas, because it's always great to have somebody in the mm -hmm. coalition that um, brings forth information that is good for all of us to hear. Absolutely, absolutely. I'd like to revisit the uh election for the leadership team that are coming up is it, it is time to be thinking about that uh if you are interested i believe in this rotation three of the leadership team members will be mm -hmm. rotating out right and need to be replaced uh we we do want to do that i i took on a second term on the last one and i'll, I'll continue through next year but we want to avoid people serving uh consecutive terms and and, and continuing that be in the position uh, we want to get fresh thoughts into the leadership team uh, and fresh perspective. So if you are interested, please uh, let us know. Uh, we uh, we only rotate out half each time. So anybody coming in who's new to the position has people that have been sitting there for a while that uh, that knows that know what we what we've been up to and, and uh, what our, I, I guess, the, the lay of the land, so to speak. So, so you're not walking into a, a situation where you're you're just blindsided. But uh, do please be thinking about that if you're interested or you know somebody who is, we would love to hear from them. Thank you. It's also a great opportunity for somebody who hasn't served in a leadership position before mm -hmm. and wants to test the waters because it's, it, it's a real, um, easygoing environment. It's not like some boards or some leadership positions where you might feel um, overwhelmed or pressured. It, um, it, we do good work and the obligation is pretty much attending the meetings, working um, with the leadership team. We meet on the opposite. You know, we meet once a month or we try to. Mm -hmm. So the commitment's not huge. Um, and you also get an opportunity to know what's going on and get out in the community. So if it's important that you get out in the community and your job or or personally, it's a great opportunity to get out in the community too um, and do some good work. Oh, <laughs> Liam. Liam. <laughs> All right. Liam says, and you get Keenan's famous <laughs> pound cake as a reward. <laughs> yeah. There's some here, Liam. All right, and Car yes. Carla has dropped in. Um, consider something an application for a Health Quality Innovators of the Year Award. Our co your coalition has many activities to check out here and ask me for help. All right, I'll follow up with that with you, Carla. I can maybe help you with that, Keenan. All right, awesome. That's something thing we have to do. Yeah. yeah, I work good together. All right, awesome. All right, awesome. I'll do an email. If you have, all. if you have. Um, a summary of of your projects or um you know things already put together just you know copy and paste into our application um and i'll give you a little tip if you have any data related to like the impact of your project or your activities that you're you're submitting an award for um that helps a little it gives you a few extra points if you 
you know, are able to show any impact. <clears throat> But um, you guys have so much going on and so many neat things. I mean, all your revive trainings and things, um, you know, consider looking at those categories and submitting. It won't take, but it won't take very long to submit something. And if you have any questions, let me know. I'd love to see you, you know, recognized for your efforts potentially. Awesome. Thank you. Great idea. Yeah. All right, awesome. Thank and then you. is the other thing I wanted to ask is another throw it out to the membership. Is there anything that we as the leadership team or we as a coalition can do that would make um, things more inclusive for everybody? If we're missing something, if you see an opportunity for us to get involved somewhere, um, love to have you speak up. And love to have you help us do some of this work. A lot of times the leadership team is taking on the burden of these events and going here and going there and talking. But it's it, you can start small, even as a member. Start small and participate um, and, um, and go from there. Yeah, absolutely. As many, yeah, we don't want to turn. Anyone that wants to come to any of these events, you're more than welcome. We usually have quite, sometimes Steve and I have been by ourselves the whole time. Not many, but you know, we do say we love each other, but we wish we had more folks that wouldn't decide that we had, you know, too many people. We've never had too many ever people show up to help. And, and you never know what, how you connect to someone else in the community, what draws them to our group. So the more, uh, more voices and smiles we have, Tell folks about our good work. We know that increases our capacity building. Yes. Absolutely. All right. Anyone else? The floor is open. Anyone else? Want to be respectful of your time? Want to make sure we give time today to update on everybody on what's been happening in the last month. What is all the great stuff that's happening next week <laughs> and into November? Um, and then, of course, we're certainly looking for events in December. Um having conversations with folks all the time. If you know of any church, school, community location, again, where you would like to host a training, please let me know. We'll work that out. If there's no other questions or comments, we'll adjourn the meeting for today. Actually, I have one more thing. I almost forgot. I'm so sorry. Um, but I did want to mention a, an event that's happening in Richmond at the VA Medical Center. They are doing a Veteran and Family Employment and Resource Fair. So that's October 28th from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the VA Medical Center in Richmond. And I can get you a flyer, Keenan. That'd be awesome. I'll include it in the minutes and we can put the flyer out on our social media. Great. Thank you. Awesome. Um, and and I think we've said it many times before, but it's always good to say it again. Like Angela shared, if you have any flyer associated with anything that you are doing and part of your work in the community, whether it's associated with what you personally do for enrichment in the community or for your agency, um, you can send me the flyers as a coalition member. We uh, post those on social media, share them out to the community at no cost. Um, you guys, if you're following us on social media and you see flyers, um, those are coming from membership so that we're supporting each other and advocating to share that anytime we've got an event where we're doing something for the young, young folks or anyone in the community, we want to be able to share that for you. So, yeah. And, and the person that we have on that consults for that, if I send her something, she has it on there usually in less than six to 12 hours um, and gets that out on our social media. So, yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Angela. Um, Tina, this is Barbara. I just wanted to um, say that on Thursday, the 26th, we'll be doing a, um, I will be participating in a vaccination clinic at TJM Community Center in uh, South Boston. And uh, we'll be offering the second dose of the shingle shot, flu shot, and COVID shot. So if you know of anyone that you know, may want to get those shots, we will be doing a clinic at the TJM Community Center in South Boston from 11 to 2 on the 26th. All right. Is awesome. that the new COVID shot? I think it is. I think we will be offering that. Okay. Okay. Do you have to, do, uh, you, uh, is the TJM Center putting a flyer out for that? Don't know. They may have one up in there, um, you know, in the building, in the door. 
but I don't know if they are putting one, actually putting one out in the community. But we will be doing that on the 26th from 11 to 2. Okay, all right. Well, if I type it up to share it out, I'll tag you in it. Okay, that'll be all fine. Right. Oh, and real quick, Barbara is beautiful for reminding me. Um, last month, I don't have my board report here to read off of it, but last month I attended the TJM community board meeting by invitation from Lisa Mettler at SBHEC after the Rapid Revive. And I did make a very short five to seven minute presentation about the coalition and about Southside Behavioral Health. I gave them all, which you all are familiar with, an informational folder that gave them uh, the one pager about the coalition, the one pager about the trauma-informed care network, and information about the different trainings that we provide. So I was in front of their board last month. So, um, so Barbara, if you're back on that board, let them remind them, say, hey, Keenan and I are together on a coalition, connect those dots for everybody. Um, they were super, super uh, kind to have, allow me to present, and we're always looking for opportunities to reconnect and go back and, um, and provide services in that, in that center. Okay. Awesome, awesome. All right, anyone else? Floor is open. Liam, could you hang out for a second when we're done? I'll do a real yep. quick team yep. meeting. Right. Yeah. All right, I'm going to go ahead and adjourn the meeting. It was great seeing everybody. If you're not able to join us in person, we missed you. It was wonderful to see your faces on screen. You all take care. Our next meeting will be November 16th. Again, Thursday, November 16th. Meet back here in the room. Again, topics will be updates on our wonderful events, announcing the election for 2024. So be thinking about, again, the Nomination. wonderful things Stephen and Catherine said about joining the coalition leadership team. We'll and see nominations. Guys. Are we all we'll be opening? starting to nominate at the November meeting? Okay. Be November and December. Yes. Nominations, biographies, setting up the survey monkey link, and then voting in December and then announcing the leadership team in January. 2024, here we come. Lord have mercy, it's coming, isn't it? <laughs> all right, thank you all.